Hi Acumen followers, this is Diana Strubler here with another blog recap. This past Monday, Dr. Ketcher said went into detail on a category that is new to everyone starting next year, Clinical Practice Improvement Activities, or CPIA as I'll shorten it. As you probably know by now, MIPS is essentially the combination of three programs that exist today, Meaningful Use, PQRS, and the Value-Based Modifier. However, CMS decided to throw in CPIA as another component that will contribute to your total MIPS score. So what is CPIA, you ask? CMS defines it as a new performance category for 2017 in which clinicians are rewarded for care focused on care coordination, beneficiary engagement, and patient safety. If that's not very clear, the final rule further defines it as an activity that relevant eligible clinician organizations and other relevant stakeholders identify as improving clinical practice or care delivery and that the secretary determines when effectively executed is likely to result in improved outcomes. CPIA will make up 15% of your MIPS composite score next year. In order to get the full 15%, you will need to earn 20 or 40 total points in this category, depending on your group size. Clinicians in a group of 16 or more will need to earn 40 points. Clinicians in a group of 15 or fewer, or clinicians that are in a rural area or a HISPA will need to earn 20 points. Now, if you're a clinician in a certified patient-centered medical home, comparable specialty practice, or an APM designated as a medical home model, you will earn full credit in CPIA without having to do a thing. Also, clinicians in certain APMs under the current APM scoring standard, such as MSSP Track 1, will also earn full credit. Clinicians that are a part of any future designated APM under the APM scoring standard will earn at least half credit. So how do you earn points? Each improvement activity is assigned a weight of either heavy, which is worth 20 points, or medium, which is worth 10 points. So if you are a clinician in a practice size of 16 or more, you can choose two heavyweight activities, four medium weight activities, or a combination of both. These activities must be conducted for a full 90 days during the performance year. As for the activities, CMS provides 92 of them that clinicians can choose from. Each activity is not only assigned a weight, but also a subcategory. The nine subcategories are similar to the National Quality Strategy domains in which they align with CMS national priorities and programs. For example, the Expanded Practice Access subcategory includes activities that surround providing 24-7 access to clinicians or the use of telehealth services. Each of the 92 activities can also be found on the QPP website. In addition, some of the CPIA activities can also earn you bonus points in the Advancing Care Information section of MIPS. If you use a certified EHR to meet certain improvement activities, you can earn a maximum of 10 bonus points. CMS provides a full list of activities that can earn ACI bonus points in the final rule on Table 8. An example of a bonus eligible activity is provide 24-7 access to eligible clinicians. This activity requires that clinicians utilize their certified EHR to do things such as send secure messages and summary of care documents. Now remember, 2017 is a pick your pace year. That means if you choose to go the easy route, you only need to submit data for either the base measures in advancing care information, one quality measure, or one improvement activity. For more details on CPIA or all things MACRA, head over to our blog at acumenmd.com blog.
Also check out our social media accounts for additional MIPS tips throughout the rest of the year. Until then, happy reading and have a happy holidays.